Hello, myself, Muhammad Ayaz Khan, and I'm a faculty of science and technology at Next IAS. Hmm? I'm here to discuss with you the, the approach towards science and technology, uh, the type of uh, questions which are being asked, what are the sources we should be focusing upon, and how Next IAS is going to help you in realizing your goal, that is to become a civil servant and crack civil services examination. See, first and foremost, science and technology is different from other subjects which we study for civil services. It's like history, is diff uh, it's not like history because history is a complete subject in its own right. Economy is also a subject, polity, geography, these are all proper subjects hmm? where you get good quality textbooks, isn't it? But science and technology is not a subject, rather it's an amalgamation of subjects. Here if you see the syllabus which has been provided to us by UPSC is like this. One of the topic they have mentioned is energy. UPSC has not told us what to study in energy, whether it is nuclear energy, whether it is solar energy, or whether it is thermal power, or whether it is wind power, or biofuel, or carbon based, like or all together. So they didn't told us. So they, that's open ended. They can ask anything. Then after that, they mention one more topic is space. What to study in space? Black holes, galaxies, satellites, launch vehicles, gravitational waves. We don't know. So UPSC left it to us. Then UPSC said biotechnology. Favorite area of UPSC as of now is biotech. Even the exam which was conducted on 4th of October, you see there were question on pneumococcal conjugate vaccine, health biotech. There was a question on genome editing, biotech. There was a question on pro-nuclei transfer, biotech. Three questions were there. As such a straightforward biotech. Okay, then they have added one more topic, intellectual property right. Patent, copyright, trademark, trade secret and all that. Then one more, IT, computers. Nanotechnology, then artificial intelligence and robotics. Besides that, UPSC has also mentioned certain things that achievements of Indians in the field of science and technology. So achievements of Indians. in the field of in the field of science and technology and daily applications of science and technology daily applications of science and technology okay and one more development of science and technology in india or indigenization of technology So if you see these, this is the slavers we have got. Here, the majority of the questions comes in preliminary. If you see preliminary, the questions are being asked from here, from here and here. As of now, in mains, they have asked some question in mains here. So this is important for pre- and means both. This is also important for pre and means both. This they have asked only in mains and this area as of now they haven't touched upon. Okay, in mains because this is going to be slightly subjective. So this is first part that is the syllabus. Now the thing is, so what type of questions they ask? See one thing, mains the questions are interfaced. Interfaced means you cannot simply afford of writing only scientific aspects of it. You have to bring the economy aspects, societal, international dimensions. Okay, 
so into that answer how it is going to have an impact on the governance how to impact it how it is going to impact the social life because one line the examiner adds towards the end of the question in the mains is the implications part defense related implication foreign policy related implication like all that we have to mention fine now this year onward although the hint was dropped by upsc last year as well the question on science and technology they like one question for having two three concept put together so what you are supposed to have for preliminary is a lot and lot of conceptual clarity of the topic and where the applications of that concept lies okay if you can work out concept and its application concept and its application then science and technology you will be able to manage beautifully mains analytical aspects of the applications like why india is looking to have the participation of private sector in space okay what should be india's policy when it comes to edible gm crops what are the challenges india might face when it comes to the adoption of edible gm crops what are the security concerns with respect to 5g technology so these are analytical aspects where obviously mains they will go but what are the technical aspects of 5g preliminary what are the technical aspects of gm crops preliminary so that that line we need to focus concept technical preliminary analytical implication mains so it's that line is very clear this side pre this side mains okay now another very important aspect is so from where should i prepare see here if you are a fresher you have just started your preparation okay then you start with ncrts if you are an engineer btech any discipline then you need to go through 8th 9th 10th ncrt of the life science portion and for engineers 8th 9th 10th ncrts okay so first let's see ncrt what you need to do 8th 9th 10th only what life science portion without that you will be struggling with biotechnology then sir what about uh, say commerce student history student law student in short those who are not from science background read biology then physics then some chemistry and we we do mark the chapters for our students of 8th 9th and 10th ncrt sir i am from life science background those with life science background no need to go through any ncrt because you already know cell chromosome dna gene somatic cell reproductive cell gametes protein synthesis amino acids rna mrna trna or rna that terminology you are always already aware of the facts why to waste time but 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 this does not means that it will get you the question 4th october there was one question which you can say from ncrt difference between plant cell and animal cell okay that question you can solve from here and obviously you have studied that in your schools also then second thing what you need to do is the booklet of next is wonderful booklet wonderful booklet and the class notes all of you all of you and one more thing newspaper
Which newspaper? The Hindu or Indian Express? Any one of the two. Questions will come from here. Questions will come from here. If you can manage these two columns, science and technology is giving you around 15 questions, 15, around 15 plus minus something always happen. It can be more than 15 also, sometimes one or two less also. Out of those 15, let me tell you one thing very clearly, 12 you can easily manage. 80% will be the strike rates in preliminary. So when it comes to mains, in mains, the number of questions from science and technology are, and this is preliminary, in mains, the number of questions are four to five questions. Now four to five questions, each question say 10, say three question, 10 marker, two mark, question, 15 marker, that means 60 marks. Out of 250, 60 marks means 25% of your paper will be from science and technology. Preliminary, 15% of your questions are from science and technology. And invariably, invariably, one essay is on some technical topic. So especially for engineers, obviously, who are not very good with that Shakespearean English, that is a, that is a lifeline which you people have got and you must ensure that you capitalize on it. Okay, fine, don't take it for granted. This subject could be your, you know, the ladder for the success. So then sir, like, um, is it really necessary to read the newspaper 100%? Most of you think that reading newspaper can be substituted by the magazines. So what UPSC has done by the, on that preliminary exam, 4th of October, they have destroyed this concept that science and technology means current affairs. People were struggling to solve even one question by mugging up all those current affairs stuff. Because UPSC always have the finger on the pulse that what you people are thinking. And let me tell you one thing, they are always one step ahead. They realize, oh, you people are going for fast food type of a culture. Fast food type of a culture, oh, take this material, mug it up and science tech is done. They said, no, no, we will not allow you. Carbon nanotubes, four statements. Genome editing, two. And add the question of stem cells. Conjugate vaccine. Pro-nuclear transfer. Applications of drone. Application of artificial intelligence. Visible line, line communication. IAEA safeguards. Now read, now tell me one such booklet which is available in the market which can help you in solving that. No sir, no. So here UPSC has told the aspirants very clearly, see we want those aspirants who have conceptual clarity. Who understands? We don't want fact churning machine. We want those people who can think. So obviously you should also think what you should think, how to approach the subject. The approach will be concept building and the application, concept building and the application. Okay, so if you can take these two sources, then you will be able to obviously solve any question, which will be obviously UPSC will be throwing at you barring one or two exceptions. See that nobody can say with preliminary, especially preliminary 100% of the questions. Our mains, one thing is for sure, questions are more predictable when it comes to mains. So we are in a better position to predict the questions where we are in mains because in mains we have to pick up the theme, which is in news. Like I just told you multiple themes which are in news. Like CDS, joint commands, a team which is in news. So they might frame a question. FDI in defense. Okay, you can say it's an economic question. You can say it's a defense question. But I will say it's a UPSC question. So one more thing we have to learn 
is we should just stop classifying this or oh, this is a science, this is this, this is this. Sir, it is UPSC. UPSC when they are saying private sector role in a space in India, then you should not end up writing only technical aspects of it. You have to bring all. Okay, legal framework, international aspect, economic aspect, social aspect, and then obviously the technical aspects. That is it. And again, again, one more thing which I'll tell you. Those of you who are sitting over there and they are, you are a non-science student and you are a fresher. Actually, some of these students come with preconceived notion about science tech. Oh, they are again going to teach me about Newton's law, about Albert Einstein's general theory of relativity, a special theory of relativity. No, 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 nothing like that. We will simply be studying what is nuclear power, nuclear reactors we have, why we are emphasizing on nuclear reactor. What is India's nuclear doctrine which says no first use? What is no first use? Okay, like that. What are the international treaties like non-proliferation treaty, CTBT? Now these things which UPSC has, uh, is asking is something which anybody can understand. Like yesterday's question on nuclear, IAEA safeguards. Question number 85 set B, this was the question. Yesterday means 4th October. What is, what is IAEA safeguard? Like India will divide its nuclear reactors into two categories, civil and military. One category of the reactor will use the uranium from abroad. Another category of the reactor will use the uranium which is domestic. Now to understand this, you are not supposed to be an engineer or a doctor or a PhD in physics, chemistry or life sciences. You just need to have common sense which you have in abundance. So first thing we need to do, we need to shed this fear of science. Here things are going to be very analytical, things are going to be very very interesting. You will see the impact like when we will discuss Rafale, why India is buying Rafale? What is the reason India is buying the Rafale? Where the role of Rafale will be as far as India's Air Force is concerned? I don't think to understand this you are supposed to be an aeronautical engineer. You just need to be a simple graduate who can understand English or even Hindi and comprehend the things. And this you have already demonstrated when you completed your graduation or post graduation. So there is no problem with that. Okay. So thank you very much. Okay. See you in next IAS. All the best.